Hello, and welcome to episode 62 of Weird My Newsroom, where this week we have one or two little new announcements, we got some trailers, and we got some news stories for all of your nerdy needs. So, let's not waste too much time, and let's go! Get your special sock out, nerds. It's gonna get good. We gotta, of course, talk about the biggest release of the week and the one that many people have been waiting for anticipation for this year. And after a long wait that I am wasting too much time building up to, the Merc with the Mouth is finally back and this time he is not alone on this new adventure as a long-awaited Geo team-up is about to happen as we have the MCU film of Deadpool and Wolverine. I would have had my mask somewhere but I have no idea where I put it. This new entry sees Deadpool be taken by the TV and brought into the wider Marvel Cinematic Universe out of the end of the Fox Universe and we'll be seeing him looking to save his, save some universe or cause chaos with it of course with the aid of a certain mutant but they may not like each other and may butt heads a lot, but they'll have to team up for one or do to cause a bit of a mess and probably save the multiverse of the universe in some capacity. Probably. I can't really explain too much in this plot because I don't want to delve into spoilers. Reception for this new film has been very well praised with great reception to the main leads, the action, the humor, and the endless cameos with some critiques to some plot elements and the villain being a little bit weak here and there. Well, you'll get that when you want a big focus on the anticipated crossover. And of course, I've seen it myself and I really enjoyed it. And do not worry, I'm not going to spoil it because I'm not a dick. And if you want to check this out for yourself, then you can catch this new film out now in cinemas. So, let's fucking go. As on the one other new release for this week is a film that had been very quiet about a new release in the UK since its announcement when the film came out in the US since mid-April and then all of a sudden just shadow dropped on the streaming services like just this week. But we have the new Guy Ritchie war film of the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. The film will be telling a form of true story about the secret small military group of rogues and mavericks that is sent on a daring plan to destroy the fleet of Führer's German U-boats by Winston Churchill and have them use their unconventional techniques to change the course of the war. Reception on this film has been decently received with the praise for its ensemble cast including for Henry Cavill and Alan Victor and for the cast and for the action with some issues on the mixed appeal and some story beats feeling a little messy. But if you want a war film that has the tone of a Wolfenstein game, from what I can get from the trailers, you can watch this new film out now on Amazon Prime. So with all that, that's all the new releases that we have for this week. The whole world smiles with you. So this week in terms of trailers is going to be a little bit messy here and there as we have Comic Con this week. That's a fair few, maybe a delay in some announcements. But we will start off with the film that dropped the trailer earlier this week, long before Comic Con. That will be putting a smile on our face and a bit of a song in our hearts as the icon of chaos is back with a new trailer for Joker. Fully do. This film follows on two years after the events of the original film and see Arthur Fleck meet the love of his life of Harley Quinzel while incarcerated at Gotham State Hospital and while on trial for the talk show Murder. And once they have been let out and will soon lead them on a doomed romantic misadventure with a bit of a sing song in there as well. So it's a case that I have was a little skeptical about this film and I felt the original should have been a one-off. I still feel a little bit, but I think after this trailer, I think this does look really good and probably worth a watch to see how they'll incorporate the whole musical aesthetic into this, but I'm sure we'll find out more when the film releases in the cinemas on October 4th. Next on the trailers is a release for a film that is coming out in about two weeks time and I'm going to count it for this one because my whole rule is anything that's 14 days out, I'm not going to fully count, but understand that case. But this has been very quiet in terms of promotion and marketing, but it looks like the team of misfits are ready to hunt for some big old treasure as we have received a new final trailer for the upcoming adaptation of Borderlands. Now this course we'll see the character of Lilith, played by Kate Blanchett, returning back to her home planet of Pandora, where she will find herself teaming with a group of unlikely heroes and together will battle alien monsters, dangerous bandits, assholes, and will find a missing girl to hold, who may hold the key to some unimaginable power. So likes this film's messy outcome that may crash and burn does bring a little bit concerning and seem a little all over the place. I've heard a bit of a mixed response from like from early test screenings for this so it's that kind of case where I've heard at least that Kate Blanchett and Jack Black are the standouts of the cast but we'll have to see how things turn out whether it might be surprisingly good or it will crash and burn but we will find out more when the film releases in two weeks time on August 8th. It's time now to learn the origins of the robots in the skies as we have received the first of the Comic Con trailers with the newest look at the upcoming animated origin film of Transformers 1. Now this film will tell the origins of Orion Pax and D 
as well as Bumblebee and Alita, of how they would gain their powers and what would lead to the divide of one's brothers in arms with Orion and D16 to become sworn enemies and the leaders of the Autobots with Optimus Prime and the Decepticons with Megatron. Now, it's a case with it that I do think this looks really good. I've heard a lot of really strong reception very recently at like fan screenings and at Annecy back in June, but the only concern that still kind of lingers with me is the likes of the faces still weird me out about looking a bit too real. I know more of the recent Transformers live action films kind of had that as well, and the old animated stuff did have like sort of humanoid faces, but it's just something about like humanoid faces on like metallic robots just seem odd when they're supposed to be turning into like trucks and cars and stuff. But I might say it probably will grow on me a bit over time, but we'll have to see when this film releases in the cinemas on October 11th. Now on the one new biographical film trail that has come out for this week, and one that I was expecting not to be making appearance until probably sometime next year, but surprisingly with a different release than I expected, as we received the trailer for the upcoming biopic on Bob Dylan with a complete no. This film will be set in the mid-1960s and will follow the rising star of, of Bob Dylan in this play by Tim V. Chalamet as he chronicles the controversy in the folk music revival of the change of the more electrically amplified instrumentation and the following way he changed the music scene to become an iconic name of music. So in all sense of things, I do not know much on the musician himself. What I've seen from like images comparisons of the two and some other aspects, it does look like Chalamet fits the part. I'm sure he'll probably work it in capacity. I think he's working with the uh, vocal coaches that work with Austin Butler on Elvis, so I'll be sure to see how this all turns out when they release in the cinema sometime in January of next year and in the US in December. Now for some more trailers from the actual convention, we are finding ourselves returning back to the lands of Middle Earth and see the fear and rise of eons before the tales of the hobbits on their quest to get rid of the One Ring as we receive the trailer for the upcoming second season to Lord of the Rings Rings of Power. Now this season will be giving a massive focus on the powerful villain of the original novel of Sauron, who will rise to ultimate power and control and how he will use that to be the creation of foraging of more rings of power. So truth be told, I haven't not watched all of the first season yet of the show. Maybe I will catch up to it in the other important manners, because uh, I was caught up with other important instances, seeing important people, seeing other things, this, that, and the other. You know the drill. And kind of a case that the probably was watching House of Dragon at the same time as well, so I probably hadn't much of a complaint or I haven't had much of a complaint or issue since the release. It's sort of died down a little bit quick enough, but I might give it a look and hopefully before I check the series out when it releases on the Prime video for the second season about a month's time on August 29th. The next entry of convention trailers is taking us into the world of the DC studios and focusing on the first of the new planned series or shows in the process of the wider DCU as we received a first trailer for the upcoming animated series of Creature Commandos. Then this series will be a form of an animated version of Suicide Squad and follow on from the 2021 film as well as the first season of Peacemaker. And we'll see Amanda Waller assigned the father of Rick Flagg, uh, Rick Flagg Sr. to become a leader of a new task force black ops team consisting of monsters and strange creatures, which includes our boy Weasel, to go on missions where death may be a possibility. Now I was wondering on the likes of when we would show any form of footage for this series and should be case from this Brief teaser, it doesn't look too bad, and I'll give this probably a look over time. I, I have good faith in Gu James Gunn stuff, and I'll give a good look into this. When this series will be dropping just in time for the holidays, some point this December. Next up on trailers is with a new cryptic form look at the second of the video game adaptations getting a trailer for their new series, as we received a first look at the upcoming adaptation for Amazon Prime of Like a Dragon. Yakuza. The story of this series will take place in the fictional Kamurocho district of Japan and follow the life of Kiryu over the course of 10 years from 1995 to 2005 as a Yakuza member while also experiencing the dynamic that he had with his childhood friend of Nishiki, as well as a case where things will probably get a bit goofy but also serious in the process. It is to say that this series is such a weird one as it can take itself so seriously in marketing and screenshots and I don't know where you have a photo of like a dude riding a dolphin just because the lulls while also dealing with deep uh, stories about someone is dying from cancer. It's that kind of thing. But all of a sudden I wonder how much this is going to make the appeal of it and will make the presence in this series but I guess we'll have to find out and if we'll go more serious, more silly or a bit of both. And also question if this is live action or more of like an animated live action hybrid kind of thing. It's a bit, it's a bit confusing with the trailers. But the series will be dropping on the Prime Video on October 24th. 
Now, coming in late, and probably the final trailer for the week, I was hoping Paramount would actually release our boy, the Blue Blur, at some point, but I guess maybe they might come out after this records, is we got a return to a dark and gritty world of crime, justice, and vengeance, but from the focus of the CD underbelly, as we have received a new trailer out of Comic-Con for the upcoming limited series of The Penguin. This new series will take place shortly after the events of the Batman and follow Oswald Cobblepot as he takes the opportunity of taking control of the city and the underworld of Gotham from the corrupt power of the Falcone mob family and build him up to the powerful crime boss that he is well known for in the series. So I think in all forms that Colin Farrell really did an excellent job as his character in the original film and it fits the role of the rise of this mobster to taking control of the city out of each trailer it really shows the hype for the series and hope with Matt Reeves we trust of building this series up more and more as Will's been to his massive new thing of the Batman epic crime saga where he's going to make more spin-offs so I've got some thinking of who they're going to make series on. And finally, we do have a release date for this series, as it'll be dropping onto Sky Atlantic and HBO Max on September 19th. So with all that, that's all the trailers that we have for this week. So of course, the big focus of the new week's news stories as well as with the section of trailers is with the yearly tradition of being the biggest nerd community to come from around the world for the big events and the big announcements, and that's of course with San Diego Comic Con. There's a lot of announcements that have come from this biggest section of streamers, actors, directors, and many more new concepts over time from each sector of the media zeitgeist, and it'll be a case that I'll be delving into the area of new announcements for this weekend, which may be a little delayed for this week alone because certain sectors were announced and stuff, but I have basically everything I can get so let's run through everything that was announced so far. So the most case that we have from the likes of one studio is with Bloomhouse. It's one small announcement that's shown off and unveiled and that's an update to the new reboot of the film based on the character of Spawn. Now this film has been in the area of silence for a bit of time. It was announced probably about a decade ago at this point and it was uncertain if the film was still happening but there was finally an update this week with the film as a form of a script for the film was unveiled with a placeholder title of King Spawn, as well as the writers for the film of Matt Mixon, Malcolm Spellman, and Scott Silver, all working on this movie. And we'll be seeing Jamie Foxx starring as the title character still. Now, the title is based on a popular series of the character. However, I don't know too much on the story anyway, so I might have to look into it. But it looks like it's fully focusing, it not, might be fully focusing on that in the plot. Apparently, it's just a placeholder title. Things are not fully clear right now, but I'm sure we will delve into more as the film enters production sometime soon. So then we go to Friday, and we're going to talk about Amazon Prime. In particular, their big flagship series of the boys. So we have the growing universe of the soup satire and stuff like that, and with a few announcements of some other stuff. So with the fourth season just finished wrapping up there last week, and a review for each season that I will bring down the line, of course, I'm going to find a place to record them. There's been a wonder of when we will see any more content from this world of these soups, and it seems like it will not be too overly long until then. As was confirmed in some capacity at first, that we're getting the second season of the spin-off of Gen V dropping sometime next year in 2025. Now we'll follow on from, you know, season one and how aspects of some elements from season four, which is surprising because they didn't really delve too much into season four in terms wise of new content for the main characters that were in that season, but they had some aspects. So I'll be interested to see how they turn out and how they're going to deal with the death of one of the main leads. This is, however, not the only piece from the boys that was announced, as it was also a case that we we're actually getting another new spin-off being worked on that is titled Dawn of Voight. That will be set in 1950s New York and we'll see the focus of two characters so far, of Soldier Boy and the character of Stormfront, which will be interesting to see how they will turn out in the future, but it all seems exciting how this will turn out. I'm sure to build a dark finale, most likely coming out either late next year or in 2026, the latest, because I think they're filming at the end of this year. On the small basis of DC, there was not much that of the massive amount of concepts discussed that we've already shown in trailers likes of Creature Commandos and the Penguin. And the event of a case where the Penguin series had a whole thing where like their event stage caught on fire, apparently. But also the confirmation that he's also going to be in C uh, the second Batman movie. But most case that we did get was that we have a new logo for the... DC Studios because they don't have anything for Superman right now. They're still filming it and it's too soon to have any footage ready to go. And we're giving a new classic look and tone for the DC Studios logo, which is nice. I think I like the new aesthetic of it and it seems appealing. There may be some other new announcements that may come by the end of this weekend, but 
I might add them in for next week. So we'll have to see if any new more news comes from the studio. It was, however, not actually the only piece from Amazon Prime because we also got a bit of an update to their side of adult animation that was coming from their channels as there was a few renewals announced at the event, at least three that I'm aware of. It was confirmed that while we also known that a season two of Hasman Hotel was well into development, including on their social media and showing off a bit of behind the scenes recording for the second season, they also confirmed at the event that we have a confirmed third and fourth season for the show coming in on the line, which is a very exciting to look forward to. And I'll be giving three of those seasons each a separate review, of course, when they come out later down the line, which you can also see from my first season review day here. I'll be looking forward to it a lot. On the other side with superheroes, they also confirmed that Invincible will be getting a fourth season after the upcoming third one, which also unveiled a new look at his nice blue shiny suit for the upcoming third season that will most likely drop sometime next year, or maybe later this year, who knows. And lastly, a confirmed announcement that has been renewed was a surprise one, but it looks like there will be a second season for the recently released Sausage Party Foodtopia. Now this one seems like an odd renewal given the more mixed response to the series, but I guess because uh, Seth Rogen has been making them profit with working on both The Boys and Invincible, that they will be allowed to follow up this season as well. So I haven't watched the full season yet, but I'll probably get my full thoughts when it comes out on Prime Video. We'll at least care about animation that works across with Amazon Prime compared to Netflix, but I have no idea what I'm talking about anymore. I'm unsure if I made it aware in the past, but I love Lego. And if Lego will, you know, I would not turn a blind eye if Lego wants to say, yo, you want a sponsorship? I will be down for that stuff. And we got some new sets on Veil the event. That new range that I do not know how to feel that was surprised that was the announcement with the ever range of sets based on Fortnite. There'll be a low price of some burger and banana characters and the most pricey one I think being the Battle Bus and also be dropping on October 1st. They'll be landing boys until the towers. They have some new sets on display for the LEGO City Space Range, Minecraft, Star Wars, and others we we know about, but we'll be getting continuing the expansion of sets with them. One new set that seen was unveiled was an other new announced LEGO Mario set range with the other ones like the Bowser Train and the Haunted Mansion was a new Mario and Yoshi Mario World look aesthetic that has like moving parts and stuff that looks pretty good and be cool to have. We'll be dropping in a few short weeks, I believe. They also have the Veiling of a new set based on Jaws, which is like the, the adults range set and is, I think, dropping, I think, in August or something like that. And the last of the two sets that they have announced as well, besides some new looks of the Animal Crossing ones, is the announcement in the form of a new edition of one of those head bills. I do have one, I think, of like a Stormtrooper. But this one is with the Sonic the Hedgehog range, but it's not focused on the main blue blur himself, but rather on Shadow, which is not start, but I get it because Shadow is huge this year with Generations and Sonic 3. A lot of them I've seen in photos and videos looks cool, and I want to have I want to have a look at them. Also, last one I think was a Botanical Garden set, which looks really nice for Retro Under Quid. So please, Lego, let's work something out. And I I might figure some space around here for some Lego sets, but I will definitely do some sets for that. So we are going to round out the announcements with the one everyone wants to hear from a Comic Con, and that is with the Marvel panel. They had two panels this year, with the first happening on Thursday or Friday that focused on the celebration of the newly released Deadpool and Wolverine that was screened for everyone in attendance, and would advise if you have not seen it yet to probably avoid their socials as there is spoilers abound. But we are talking on the main event on Saturday, where they started the event with a choir rendition of Prayer from Madonna before Feige took to the stage and talked a few of the known upcoming releases. They mainly focused on the films, like the, the, the upcoming four or five films that we know of, they didn't really talk on the shows, but I'm guessing that's D23's release. So they started the main event with the new Captain America, Brave New World, with all the cast coming out to talk on the film, and also confirmed the announcement that Giancarlo Esposito will be playing the character of Sidewinder, who is the king of the Serpent Society, which confirms they are still part of this film, after she initially been planned as the third Captain America film before that changed the Civil War, and was going to be the case with the fourth movie, and they're still going to happen. They also showed some footage from the film that sees the transformation into the new Red Hulk for the main character, and some bit of fight at the White House, now, after the clip, they brought out the legend himself of Harrison Ford, who is taking over the role of Thunderbolt Ross and giving his excitement for the film. Next case in with film discussion was with the upcoming film of Thunderbolt's Asterix, with the Asterix apparently having some deep meaning to it, we have to watch the film to find out what it means, and some of the cast come out to talk in the film, including David Harbour strolling in his Red Guardian best. They showed a little bit of footage for the film, but was exclusive to the event to wrap up that section. Next, we finally got to see the introduction of Marvel's first family, with the introduction of the cast of the Fantastic Four, with the unveiling of a new subtitle for the film being now called Fantastic Four First Steps. The film did not have much to show, it was only just going to start filming as of writing and recording this on Tuesday on the 30th 
of July. So most cases we film in the UK, so we're going to probably see a lot of set photos start to leak from the beginning of this week after the pre-shoot stuff. And we know the case we got a bit of some animatics with the pre-shoots as well as cast come together and the director appear on stage to talk about their excitement as well confirm the setting up in alternate future 1960s New York. A Akin to say like the Jetsons, as well as the confirmation of their fantastic car is also making an appearance in the film. Now all of it sounds really cool and will have them lead into the new Avengers films as well. They've confirmed they're going to appear in it. Now speaking of, this is where the big announcement is and you've probably seen my little short I'm going to drop as well, but a case that we have two big Avengers films coming out. Now you may think that they skipped the film and you would be right as he didn't touch on Blade at all given the film is having a bit of a development issues, but it looks like most case they've delayed it, we'll probably find out more about it at D23 in two weeks time and I'll record about it then. However, we got the announcement of three big things I could talk on that has the internet a buzz and a little uncertain about. First up, we have the confirmation that the Rooster Brothers are now confirmed to be directing the two Avengers films that have not received the release dates from May of 2026 and 2027. The second of the news pieces is that we now have a new name for the fifth film. It initially was going to be titled The Kang Dynasty, but due to the whole legal woes of the Kang actor Jonathan Majors, it had to be changed and he was, you know, given the boot. And now this new fifth movie is going to be called Avengers Doomsday, which is confirming that Doctor Doom is now in control. But the last one is the big discussion that is basically hitting the inner waves and has been a bit uncertain to some people, but Doctor Doom has now been confirmed to be played by Robert Downey Jr. as a, re as a return to the MCU. Now, of course, it's a bit uncertain to some people in line as they're unsure if they feel it is right, but it's probably established some comic stories in the past. They have switched minds of Victor Von Doom and Tony Stark switched minds, like what if scenarios, but I feel in probably case, this is probably just some simple version of Doom as a variant and there's probably going to be a more powerful version played by someone else in the multiverse or some other powerful being in control of Doom. Probably like the Beyond or something like that because I know Secret Wars builds into that capacity. I'm sure we'll probably learn more close to release of the film but we'll have to see then. So that's basically everything that we have from Comic-Con and after all of this discussion I would like to know your thoughts and everything that was unveiled or announced at Comic-Con itself and what aspects are you most excited for to see released in particular. Let me know your thoughts and all down below in the comments and we can discuss them there. When we just had the highs of Comic-Con Con, we have a new story that is pre Comic Con, and I, I don't want to go too deep into this because this announcement is probably one of the worst idea concepts that has been green up from some big studios, and that's the area of some form of humor that is only funny for a sort of new generation. When I first saw this announced, I really questioned what executive or studio saw this director come along and announce this, and I think this would be a good idea and will make massive amounts of money. They saw revenue from YouTube, and I questioned its stupidity, because it really feels like they are really out of ideas with this one. Now I bet you're wondering, what am I blabbering on about? Oh, on Tuesday, it was announced that Michael Bay, you know, the director of the five Transformers films and the two Ninja Turtles movies, as well as Ambulance, will be making, this is no joke, a film and TV series based on the popular concept meme of Skibbity Toilet. I'm not making this up as a joke. This is a real thing, and I hate it. The basis of what I've read online amongst all the other people saying this is a terrible idea is to be made into a film or show is that it'll be a war against the humans, cyborgs, and the heads poking from the toilets in the battle of domination. And in all sense, I could not care. I'm just surprised they are essentially appealing to the iPad kids to get them into the cinemas and get the streamers and also buy the soon to be non knockoff merch, which does exist. I've seen clips of existed knockoff merch for Skibbity Toilet and has shown that they are dipping into the worst place for entertainment, and that is the content farms. Then again, two late night shows of Jimmy Fallon and Stephen Colbert also did a Skibbity Toilet joke with Skibbity Violet and Skibbity Megan, and they were both cringe. I know the case that you could pull a lot more appealing aspects from YouTube to make into better films or series with a big budget, like, you know, that's where we got Smiling Friends, Husband Hotel, and a few other stuff, but this is not a good choice at all. But this one, I need, this needs to be extended to, it doesn't need to be extended to a full length series, so I don't have no idea what's going on here. But I'd like to know your own opinions on these things that you've watched me, but those who have watched me in particular, do you see this as actually working out or has this reached a point of Hollywood running out of ideas and will start pulling more from these really shady content farms? Let me know your thoughts and opinions, but it's all down low in the comments. So this may be the end of things, but Oh, we have one more story that's non-Comic-Con news, and it's a bit of a breaking news story, and it all comes to the topic that was a massive continuing story from last year, if you follow along on my blogs and videos, of the SAG After Strikes. Now, for those unaware or new to this series, I cover this story from the beginning of the two strikes with the writer strike starting at the very beginning on May 2nd last year, and then about two and a half months later, around 
the release of Barbenheimer was when the actors unionized and went on strike themselves. Both of them lasted for a few months, with the rioters one ending on September 27th and then actors continuing on until the 9th of November, where the process of their strikes were to do with the better needs of pay for extensive areas of working for a network TV, big screens, as well as the streaming services, and also the case of going against being taken over by AI of like writing and acting capacities, and all seems to have found a good deal in the process in the end. But it does not seem like every sector of the sag after egg guilds have agreed with proper outcomes, as it looks like one more sector is going to be taking up the picket lines. Because it was announced as of midnight on July 26th, it was announced that the Video Game Actors Guild has announced they are gone on strike after a year and a half of failed negotiations over the mix of their fair compensation and the fear of being overtaken by AI themselves for future use. Now what we'll see from this, we'll have a fair amount of game companies and actors in North America and other areas will be seeing a bit of a hit in the industry, with companies such as Activision, EA, Take-Two Interactive, Insomniac and so many more parties being affected with many games in the process, we'll see probably some possible delays for their games. But the biggest concern I've seen online is the case this could see the delay of the highly anticipated Grand Theft Auto 6, but I think this one has not been majorly affected. I think their actors ones have all been recorded, and it's a case that I think they're still aiming for the fall 2025 release. I have no idea yet. And I do hope they will get to see the strikes be resolved in Sora very much quicker than the last two, and that they will get a fair wage and better demands, because they are one of the biggest industries. They're probably the biggest industry in the world in terms of profits, so it will be interesting to see if this all will play out quickly or will go on for over long points but if any updates come along for this i will update in later videos of course but what are your thoughts on this all announcement of video game actor strike and do you see this making a lot of big games be delayed and do you see other areas of media hitting the picket lines in general i'm surprised the visual effects departments haven't started to unionize and head head on strike as well like because it's been teased about it since like august of last year or so we'll have to see but let me know what your thoughts are down below and with all that that's all the news that we have for this week let's fucking go Let's fucking go. And now, of course, with all of that, that ends episode 62 of Weird Mind Newsroom. And I hope you enjoyed this video. That will probably be a bit overlong by trailers and news, but we get that anyway. So a little bit of updates on some other stuff. So as you can tell by my channel, I have surpassed 100 videos and I just dropped my review for Inside Out 2. It's a bit over long. It might be a bit over indulgent in case sometimes with the over and analyzing stuff and fact statistics kind of thing but it sometimes that's not the method i go with my reviews but if you want to check it out it is down below in the description or you can point up here in the annotation and stuff like that but yeah i hope you enjoy watching it and i thank you all for uh, following me for the 100 videos let's go for 100 more and many more videos down the line other aspects in the case instance there's gonna be some more reviews coming along i'm probably gonna try and do a review for deadpool and wolverine and spook me 4 i'm gonna get those ones out of the way as well as working on the other ones that i have on the list which is some video game reviews some tv shows show reviews capacity and a few other ones here and there sort of ways but they're gonna be worked on i'm probably gonna keep a spoiler free review as well for deadpool and wolverine when i get the chance of course because i'm not gonna spoil things anyways otherwise then gameplays they're gonna be coming along as well i haven't actually played it in a bit because i have two or three episodes on the back burner as you can clearly tell because it's focused on the reviews they're going to be getting released over the next day or two i have one more review still with audio footage left to uh, cut through was the chicken run 2 review before i got into the other stuff long form stuff i'm going to get working on as well the ai one is still cooking along for the you know the birthday person as well their video is still being made you know earlier this week and happy birthday and then the capacity of other bits whereas like the ai stuff the rewatch of on that's coming along as well but there's a few different things i'm going to create some other concept ideas I'm gonna make more shorts i might make more stuff for like maybe social medias as well to kind of like build on the aspects like maybe some short form reviews put us on there wasn't here if you want me to post some videos on my uh, social medias you can follow me there and let me know down there let me know over there i appreciate it anyways i think that's how much i can give for the moment i can't really think of anything else my brain is uh, gone somewhere i don't know <laughs> But anyway, I hope you all enjoy listening to my ramblings again for another week. And as always, if you enjoyed my content and want to see more from me, then simply like and subscribe as I upload new videos every single week from variations of reviews, long forms, gameplays, and this, of course, and probably more new concepts and ideas down the line. If you want to see me do other concepts and ideas or you have like a, spe a special segment you want to shout out to, let me know down below. And as always, share it around, of course, and comment below all your thoughts and opinions everything that was announced this week. I've discussed. As always, I hope you all stay being wonderful people and have a great day every day. Keep uh, doing many great things and to keep being you because no one else can do what you do. And I've completely lost the track here, but as always, I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you all in the next video. So take care everyone and farewell.